Hello and welcome to another Cypher 2 tutorial. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Transmod. Transmod is Cypher 2's modulation system. Many synths use a thing called a modulation matrix, which is really nothing more than a spreadsheet which contains modulation sources, amount depths and destinations. Transmod is a little different, so let's take a look. Up at the top of the screen here we can see a number of boxes. These are Transmod slots, and each slot contains a source. If I select one of these by double clicking on it, the visualizer in the center will give us information about that slot. At the top here we can see the source, and just below it is the source preview. So if I go to the LFOs category and select LFO1 main out, we can see there that the LFO is moving very slowly in a triangle waveform. And if we go to LFO1 down here, we can see that the rate is actually eight bars and that it is indeed set to a triangle waveform. So in order to assign this to some parameter, all I have to do is go to the parameter in question on the interface and grab it using this light gray ring on the outside. If I pull down with the mouse, you'll see an orange ring begin to appear. And that's the modulation amount. If I actually move the cutoff itself to the middle, you'll see now that because the LFO is bipolar, this blue indicator shows the actual value that's being modulated. If I change that LFO up to a unipolar, you'll see that it only modulates in the orange area. So it's only modulating a positive amount, not positive and negative. And you'll find actually that most sources have a unipolar or bipolar option. So the beauty of this system is that actually one modulation source, one slot, can be applied to as many destinations as you want. And almost anything on the interface can be modulated. So faders can be modulated by just grabbing in the dark background area and pulling upwards or downwards. And we can see, just like with the knob above, that this orange bar has appeared to show the amount of modulation. And then this blue overlay shows us the actual modulation. So that's wonderful for one slot, but how do we know what's going on in the entire patch? You may notice that some parameters on the interface have a light orange color just underneath them. This indicates that some modulation is going on on that parameter. And if I roll my mouse over the parameter, you'll see in the modulation slots above that one of the modulation slots has gone a kind of dark orange. And this shows me which slot is actually doing the modulation to this parameter. So if I go up to LFO2 here and double click, we can see there that it is affecting the oscillator to scale parameter by a very small amount, but I can see that in that small orange segment there. In the same way that this works, if I roll over any of the modulation slots up here, you'll be able to see what that slot is affecting without selecting it just by rolling over with the mouse. So I can see here that LFO1 is actually affecting um, oscillator 1 FM3 amount down there. And I think that's it. Let's have a look. LFO sub 1 is modulating a few different parameters. I can see them again using the orange rings around the outside. So it's very easy to get an overview of what's going on with the modulation system. It's not like just looking down a huge table of numbers and trying to work out what's going on where. So let's pick a slightly faster moving LFO. Here we've got LFO2 sub, which you can see is oscillating away nicely. In this particular patch, that's assigned to the panning down here. This is a drone sound that I'm working on for a new pack, and it sounds a bit like this at the moment. So quite a complex sound. I'm going to switch the effects off just for now so that you can hear the effect of this LFO on the panning. Let's say that I only want that panning 
to happen when I increase the mod wheel. And that's where this scale parameter comes in here. The source is scaled by whatever you enter in here. So currently it's at a constant of one. So the LFO will be multiplied by the value of one, which just gives you an exact copy of the LFO there. But we can actually choose any one of the modulation sources available in the entire of Transmod. And Transmod has over 150 modulation sources. So I'm going to go down to Monophonic and I'm going to choose the mod wheel. Now immediately below it gives me a preview of the mod wheel. If I increase my mod wheel you can see there what's going on. And obviously if it's multiplying the LFO by the mod wheel and the mod wheel is at zero you're going to get zero output. So now what's happening is that the panning is only going to work when the modulation wheel goes up like so. And obviously multiplying an LFO by a mod wheel is a very typical example. However, because you can choose from 150 sources and scale them by 150 other sources, the sky is really the limit on modulation here. So you'll notice that up in the slot now we have um, the LFO2 sub label and then we have the mod plus which is the mod wheel. So we know that the LFO is being modulated and scaled by the mod wheel below it. Once you get used to the modulation system, it's actually much faster to come straight up here to the modulation slot, right click and choose a new modulation source from the ones that are available. And that's the same if you right click on the mod plus. And there's a few other things that you can do here. You can lock a modulation slot, you can mute it. Uh, if you want to know what it's like without that particular modulation, then mute is really handy. It saves you from unassigning everything and then reassigning it afterwards just so that you can hear uh, what that patch sounds like without that modulation. And then we have some copy, paste and swap options here. You can unassign and you can clear the modulation. So that would keep the LFO2 sub and mod wheel scale, but it would clear any destinations. Now you might have noticed that along the bottom here we have eight slightly thinner looking mod slots. These are primarily for MPE sound design. However you can make use of them in normal sound design as well. And each one links to a curve and you'll see in the visualizer in the center of the screen that as I roll over them each curve is updated. So we've got the five MPE curves here. Those are strike, that's basically velocity, glide, slide, pressure and lift. And you can see here that I can apply a curve to any one of these. We can also add some slew to it uh, and modulate the gain. But we can also change the source of that curve. So having these curves at your disposal is a very powerful way of adapting individual modulation sources to behave exactly as you want them to in a patch. And that's very important in MPE sound design, but also it could equally be used in any form of sound design. The last three curves by default use the three performance controllers down here as their sources. So you can apply um, a curve to these. And by default for normal MIDI controllers, these are assigned to the modulation wheel, channel pressure, and I think expression control. And if you're using an MPE controller, then these are assigned to the three MIDI CCs by default that you get on a rolly seaboard rise with the three sliders. So those curves by default use those as their sources. But once again, if you want to use them to apply a curve to any modulation source, you can do so there. Now I haven't got time to fully go into all the modulation sources. Like I said, there's over 150 of them. We've got envelopes, LFOs, those are fairly self-explanatory. The ramps are the ramp modulation sources. There's uh, ramp one and two down here in the bottom left. And they're often used to add some attack to a sound. Performance controls are the three performance controls that we just looked at, plus the XY pad, which is available here on the visualizer. MPE curves are the 5 MPE curves that we looked at up here 
Um, obviously, you can assign these to other slots as well. If you want to scale them, for example, you might want to put them in a full proper slot. User curves are the three curves at the end there that we just looked at. Monophonic sources are things like the mod wheel breath controller. So these are um, fixed MIDI CCs. Pitch bend is a monophonic source unless you're using an MPE controller. Polyphonic sources are uh, things like note velocity and uh, of course poly pressure, which we fully support. Random is a great source of different types of randomness. Uh, you've got analog drift, for example, which is a very slowly drifting random source, which is really good for modulating the sort of problems that old analog synthesizers have with, you know, oscillators warming up and going slowly out of tune, that kind of thing. And then there are all sorts of random sources that can be applied per note or even per parameter. Unison and voice is a, a fascinating one to play with. Unison basically allows you to use this unison parameter down here. So if you have, for example, three unison voices in a patch, that will stack three copies of the synth on top of itself. And you can use Unison as a modulation source to apply to absolutely anything. This is one of the primary examples of how powerful Cypher 2 is, because many synthesizers only allow you to apply Unison to maybe oscillator detune and panning, whereas Cypher allows you to apply it to absolutely anything. So you could have different voices with different LFO speeds or different envelope shapes or different filter settings. There's a huge amount of power there. Step sequencer obviously is the um, sequencer page and that allows you to use those sequencers directly in the transmod system. The maths units very briefly um, are over here in the visualizer and they allow you to do yet more mathematical things with modulation sources. So you've got an A and a B and then a maths function that you can apply to those two things. Uh, these include, you know, the sort of standard multiply or add together, uh, but as well as some pretty cool stuff down here. If you're into experimenting with this stuff, have a read of the manual. There is almost nothing that this modulation system can't do. And then very quickly, the remaining ones are uh, constants, which is just a bunch of numbers. So for example, if you want to scale a particular modulation source by half, you would just go into constants and select 0.5 as your scale. Uh, the Euclid is again to do with the XY pad that we looked at here. You can see the Euclidean function. That dot that's following around my mouse is a Euclidean modulation source and you have all sorts of uh, options down here to make it follow slower or faster, uh, dampen the sort of gravity around it. So you can see there that it's now very slowly following my mouse and that as a modulation source is a fascinating thing to play with. Key zones is obviously uh, the keyboard zones. Paraphonic, again, um, this is one that you'll need to delve into the manual for, but it gives you all the functions you need to emulate uh, paraphonic synthesizers. Then we've got gates and oscillators. Gates are various clocks and triggers and the oscillators are actually oscillator one, two, and three. It is worth noting that when they go through transmod, they're not running at full audio rates, they're running at control rates. So what you'll find there is that you won't get pristine frequency modulation, for example, you might get some aliasing with that, but they're still very useful to have. And that, in a rather large nutshell, is the transmod modulation system in Cypher 2. Thanks very much, join me soon for another tutorial.